Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to call this meeting of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to order. Today is Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. The time is 9.30 a.m. I'm John Nearman. I'm joined today by Commissioner Bobby Janeka, our General Counsel, Mary Smith, and joining us virtually is Commissioner Gonzalez. Registration is now closed, but, but if you'd like to address the commission on a particular item, I would ask you to visit our registration table or email um, agenda at tceq.texas.gov with your name, your affiliation, and the item that you'd like to speak to, and we'll do our best to accommodate that request. For those addressing the commission, our general counsel or I will inform you of your time limits and also let you know when it's your turn to speak. Um, I want to thank everybody for being present today. I want to um, beg your forbearance for a little TCQ family business, and that is to um, recognize the outstanding career of Tracy Gross. Hi, Tracy. Tracy uh, joined the agency in 1997 as an enforcement lawyer. Um, she um, came over to the Office of General Counsel in, in uh, 2000. Um, she has served every uh, commission panel of TNRCC or TCEQ um, since that time. And so that's every panel except the very first panel. Tracy has had a significant hand in crafting the commission's penalty policy. She's been a key point person on legislative work for 12 legislative sessions, including two sunset reviews. And she's had several turns as acting general counsel for the agency. She is known for her deep experience in waste permitting, enforcement, and agency procedure. Um, here's a little bit about what her colleagues have to say about Tracy. Um, she is always very eager to help. She is reliable, knowledgeable. She is a master of the essential lawyer skill of distilling the complex, of making the incomprehensible comprehensible. She is smart. She is smart. She is smart. Um, she's been um, an important point, maybe the important point in the Office of General Counsel for continuity as commissioners have come and gone over the years. Personally, I have valued Tracy's rock solid legal analysis and advice and her outstanding sense of humor. Um, thank you, Tracy. Um, we want to compliment you on an outstanding career. We want to thank you for over a quarter century of service to the people of the state of Texas. And, um, and congratulations on your, on your next chapter that I know will be rewarding. Um, and I do have something to present to you. If you'll, actually, I'll meet you over here. So I understand that Tracy's going to reserve any remarks for her retirement party where she can speak more freely. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Um, thanks for bearing with us. Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to please call the first item. Item number one is the consideration of the ALJ's proposal for decision and proposed order concerning the application of Valero Refining Texas LP for modification to state and prevention of significant deterioration, air quality permit numbers 38754 and um, PSDTX324M15 PS and GHDPSDTX211. The applicant should speak first, followed by the protestant, the ED, and then OPIC. Each party has been provided five minutes of oral argument time. The applicant may save time for rebuttal as it bears the burden of proof on the application. So 
So I believe we'll be beginning with the applicant and Mr. McDonald is here for the applicant. Good morning, Mr. McDonald. Just make sure you've got a green light on that microphone. I do see green, so I think we're good. I'm not sure we're hearing you. Try hello, to hello. The microphone, maybe about six hello, inches hello. away. There, there it go. is. Yeah, I think we get a little you. closer. Um, good, morning. good morning, Chairman Muirman, um, Commissioner Janeka, and Commissioner Gonzalez. Uh, my name is Derek McDonald with the law firm of Baker Botts. I'd like to reserve one minute for rebuttal, please. It's my privilege this morning to represent the applicant, Valero, who is seeking air permits to authorize an innovative, advanced uh, pro refining project at its Corpus Christi West refinery. Uh, with me today are key members of the Valero team, Stephanie Hall, Parker Wilson, and Arnaldo Medina. This first of its kind project produce, uh, proposes the addition of a second reactor in the existing cracking unit at the refinery. So the refinery can also produce um, higher value products such as propylene, which is used as a building block in many of the materials we use day to day. We're asking the commission to enter an order that grants our exceptions and those of the executive director and issues the draft permit on this project. So this project can become a su successful demonstration of new and advanced capabilities of Texas's existing refining assets. The record before you shows the application is fully in step with the commission's mission. It's protective of public health, natural resources, and is consistent with sustainable economic development. The evidence in the record on protectiveness is undisputed. The emissions will protect human health, physical property, and the environment. And the recommended order before you finds that Valero met its burden of proof on other applicable, applicable requirements with one exception, the NOx BACT emission rate for the modified cracking unit. On that issue, the judges erred and the exceptions before you highlight that error. Valero operates its cracking unit subject to a stringent BACT limit of 37 parts per million and is able to maintain that level of control and not increase authorized NOx emissions from the unit even with these additional capabilities that are being proposed. Valero looked hard, consistent with the commission's rules, at whether add-on controls are technically feasible and economically reasonable to be required as BACT for this modification. Valero identified tube controls, low tox and SCR systems as having capability to achieve a greater level of control at 20 parts per million NOx this is the level that's been proven to be operational and achievable with these controls at similar sources and ozone attainment areas like Corpus Christi where BACT is required. But our analyses showed that the cost of these controls would not meet this test of economic reasonableness. Control costs for low tox would be over 38,000 con tons controlled and SCR would be almost double that at 88,000 tons versus in uh, dollars per ton containment controlled. areas. Uh, like this case is not about whether BACT the numerical required. threshold of 10,000 per ton is the right the cost, cost for economic reasonableness. Meet Valero's calculation showed cost effective control calculations for that were four to eight times that amount. Tons controlled. Um, and, and these SCR calculations are accurate. At Valero knows the cost of capabilities uh, of these controls well, areas. having used them at uh, other this assets. This case is not about the whether ACT the calculations reflect the type of our data and site-specific right engineering cost estimates Valero's that your guidance documents recommends be recommends are used in these calculations. The ALJs ignored. And these uh, calculations Valero used the level of 20 parts per million and not some lower rate well, because that is the level in the other assets operational and the permitted facilities the type of data for the life of the facility and cost estimates and that your guidance uh, for the full range of operating conditions and considering the cost this is what sets the ALJs ignored not unverified Valero used the level of 20 parts per million and not some lower rate planning documents in California for the operation uh, ozone not attained uh, 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 Valero met its bird uh, here is found by your staff time and time. Yeah, one minute remaining. Okay. And CFAJ, the protestant, failed to rebut it. There's no alternative act analysis in the record. There's no alternative cost effectiveness calculations. The record is showing uh, the, that uh, 37 is not the right number. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Uh, colleagues, any questions for Mr. McDonald at this point? Seeing none, thank you. 
Um, next, we'll hear from Protestants Council, Mr. Levine. Good morning, Mr. Levine. Good morning, Chairman Nierman, um, Commissioner Janeka, and Commissioner Gonzalez. Um, Ilan Levine, here for the Protestants, Citizen for Environmental Justice. Also wanna just point out that we're also here representing the interests of folks who wanted to be a party but were not let in. Uh, Hillcrest Residents Association, we're also here representing the interests of some non-parties Sierra Club, Texas Campaign for the Envi Environment, and Ingleside on the Bay Coastal Watch Association. A um, qu couple of quick thank yous before I get into the responses. I uh, want to thank um, General Counsel Smith and the commissioners and the parties for the brief continuance. Much appreciated. I want to take a minute of my precious time to actually go a little outside bounds and thank some members of your staff that don't get enough thanks, who I think is the chief clerk's office. Um, the chief clerk's office is always helpful, always polite. They put up with a lot and we appreciate them. I wanted to acknowledge that. Um, there have been a number of public meetings in the Corpus Christi area in the last months. I've been there, your staff have, have been there. If, if y'all have not heard, about some of those meetings, um, you will hear that um, you know, I, they say the meek will inherit the earth. Well, the meek are, are ticked off. Um, and some of your staff hear about that um, and have to process that. We appreciate them. The issue here today is whether Valero can do better than what they're proposing to do on one key pollutant nitrogen oxides. With this change to this old oil refinery, Valero wants to be able to have flexibility to process a, a broader array of inputs and to make some different material. Um, Valero is known for refining oil and making gasoline, but the company sees the writing on the wall and they're trying to modify that refinery to be able to make some plastic building block products and so forth. If they do that, this is a big change to oil refining. It's a new process. So they will go from about 250, give or take a few tons of nitrogen oxides to over 400 tons of nitrogen oxides. And that's why it's a major new source review amendment. The ALJs heard all the testimony they heard all the facts everything that you've heard mr mcdonald argue everything that you will hear argued and everything in the exceptions and the briefs before you were all argued in the hearing before the aljs they heard from the various witnesses and they found cfej's witness to be most compelling on all of these fact issues the aljs found that the tcq's witnesses did not meet was that their testimony was not compelling similar with valeros um so technically feasible the aljs made a number of fact determinations and fact findings and found that can this process do better than 37 parts per million well yes of course it's technically feasible there are a number of examples out there where that's happening including one report that we cited to, for, that we found from Valero's material. It was cited to in the application. That's the reclaim report. So we don't wanna to make too much of that, um, but that's one piece of information that we got from them. Economically reasonable, that's the other question. Also, a de that requires a detailed fact finding. And the ALJs looked at those facts and found the arguments that you heard Mr. McDonald summarize a moment ago to be unpersuasive. They did not meet their burden. So should this, if built, should this plant that's gonna be around in this community for another 20, 30, 40, 50 years, I don't know, should they be emitting at levels of 
37 parts per million which they want, or can they do better? Well, we hope that you agree with your not one but two fact finders, your two ALJs, and go with their recommendation. Thank you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Levine. Colleagues, any questions? Seeing none, no questions. thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gonzalez. Um, we'll hear next from Executive Director Staff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners, General Counsel, Public Interest Counsel. My name is Amanda Cranock with the Environmental Law Division, representing the Executive Director. With me and available to answer questions is Kara Hill, with the Air Permits Division. Available online is Amy Browning with the Environmental Law Division and Justin Cherry with the Air Permits Division. This authorization, if issued, will authorize Valero to implement the Heavy Oil Cracker Reconfiguration Project, which is referred to as HOC, which is a type of Fluid Catalytic Cracking Unit, or FCCU. For the reasons discussed in the ED's response and exceptions to the ALJ's proposal for decision as filed, the Commission should issue the permit for to Valero for the West plant and reject the ALJ's finding concerning the backed analysis for Knox. The ED agrees with the ALJ's recommendation that the proposed PM emission limitation of one pound per thousand pounds of coke burn constitute backs for the PM emissions for the HOC unit. The ED does not agree with the ALJ's recommendation that a lower emission limit than 37 parts per million for NOx is backed for the HOC unit. The ALJs first argued that the lower backed em emission limit is appropriate because other refineries had lower emission limits for FCCUs when utilizing the low tox technology. However, a lower emission limit does not automatically constitute backed. TCU testimony and the record before the ALJs established backed is an enforceable emission limit in an NSR permit, whereas the lowest achievable emission rate or layer is finding the lowest limitation in practice. Layer is the most stringent emission limitation achieved in practice. This is not the requirement for BACT. As the Commission is aware, Layer applies in counties that are designated as non-attainment, and Corpus Christi is an, is an attainment for all 10 criteria pollutants. Therefore, Valero is not required to implement the lowest limit achieved in practice, but determine a limit based on a proper backed analysis. The ALJs did not provide an alternative backed emission limit in lieu of the 37 parts per million. The ALJs further argued that the cost analysis for the low tox and SCR technologies was insufficient. The ALJs relied on the reclaim report provided by the protestants, Citizens for Environmental Justice, as a basis for considering the cost of the low tox and SCR. However, TCEQ can only conduct a can, excuse me can only conduct a cost analysis in accordance with the EPA or air, air pollution control cost manual and so, did so in its review. TCEQ properly evaluated Valero's, Valero's proposal for the low tox and SCR technologies and were both were found to be economically reasonable and therefore or excuse me are, were found not to be economically reasonable and therefore not required. TCEQ has historically used an approximate threshold value of $10,000 per ton, excuse me, per ton of NOx removed and the cost to be considered economically unreasonable, although this is not a bright line rule. Valero found that the cost of implementing the low tox technology would be over $30,000, which is over three times more than the $10,000 threshold, and therefore is considered economically unreasonable. The ED maintains the position that the review of the application and draft permit met all applicable statutory and regulatory requirements. ED staff performed the necessary review to ensure the draft permit would meet all federal and state requirements and would be protective of the environment and human health and welfare. Thank you, and we are available to answer any questions. Thank you. I have none. Colleagues, any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Appreciate that. Ms. Jameson, good morning. What's the what's the view of the Office of Public Interest Council? <laughs> good morning, uh, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Executive Directors, Attorneys, and Staff. For the record, I'm Jennifer Jameson on behalf of OPIC. Upon consideration of all evidence, OPIC agrees with denial of this permit as outlined by the ALJ's proposal for decision. Specifically, OPIC contends that Valero has met its burden with respect to backed limits for particulate matter, but was unsuccessful in justifying its decision to eliminate the option of retrofitting its heavy oil cracker, HOC, with pollution controls to limit the emission of nitrogen oxides. 
For this reason, OPIC is focusing on applicants' deficiencies with respect to NOx limits. Concerning nitrogen oxides, OPIC agrees with protestants and the ALJs that applicants' proposed NOx emission limit of 37 parts per million does not constitute BACT for the HOC, and an emission limit of 37 parts per million is significantly higher pollution is a significantly higher pollution limit for NOx when compared to what other refineries have achieved from their HOCs using low temperature oxidation technology or low tox. In this case, the preponderance of the evidence demonstrated that HOCs using low tox achieve outlet concentrations that can range from eight to 10 parts per million. When considering cost effectiveness of retrofitting its HOC with low tox, OPIC agrees with the ALJ's assertion that there is no evidence in the record concerning the relative cost of utilizing low tox or selective catalytic reduction or other technologies across the industry, which is what a backed analysis requires. Instead, Valero and the ED rely on a $10,000 per ton of NOx removed as a threshold to eliminate both low tox and SCR from Valero's backed analysis. When asked on cross-examination how long TCEQ had maintained $10,000 per ton of NOx removed as the standard for economic reasonableness, an ED witness stated that there was no bright line test for economic reasonableness, but that number had remained the same for the entirety of the eight years that this witness has worked at TCEQ and has not been adjusted for inflation to reflect current economic climates. Accordingly, OPIC agrees with protestants and the ALJs that Valero has failed to demonstrate that the cost of implementing low tox or SCR are disproportionately high when compared to the cost of control in recent back determinations. Absent sufficient showing regarding cost effectiveness of retrofitting HOC with low tox or SCR, OPIC must respectfully recommend denial of this permit as outlined by the ALJ's proposal for decision. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jameson. Um, colleagues, any questions? Seeing none. Mr. McDonald, I believe you have um, 50 seconds remaining. So in response to the uh, positions or, or arguments that were presented here, Valero did look and consider whether it could do better, as Mr. Levine says whether there is a theoretical possibility that add-on controls could reach a lower NOx of eight to 10, despite there being no evidence in the record that any cracking unit has, that has been subject to a BACT uh, limit that restrictive. The, um, the record shows that the refinery highlighted as an example, Marathon, Texas City, actually operates near its TCEQ BACT limit of 20 parts per million, not eight parts per million. We ran the calculations again, you know, for purposes of the hearing to see whether if in fact those types of controls could reach that level, which we disputed during the hearing, would it would that make these controls economically reasonable? And our conclusions and the evidence in the record shows still not uh, economically reasonable. We still saw a cost in excess of $22,000 per ton. That's time. Control cost. And so for that reason, we rejected that theory as well. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. McDonald. Um, Colleagues, I, here's where I am on this. My my analysis aligns with executive director's staff on this. Um, based on my review of the PFD and the record, I believe that Valero um, has in fact met its burden of proof to show that the draft permit meets all applicable requirements, including that PM and NOx emission limits in the draft permit um, indeed constitute fact. So I would overturn the ALJ's decision to deny the application based on back for Knox, I would grant the permit and revise the proposed order and explanation of changes. And let me, before I really bear down on it, let me um, take your temperature and um, then go from there. Commissioner Janeka. Um, I'm generally in agreement. In my review of the record, I concluded that ALJ's erred in recommending denial of Valera's application due to the substantial evidence in the record including evidence put on as part of Valero's rebuttal case, establishing that the draft permit does meet all applicable requirements, including the back limits for the PM for, for both PM and NOx. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gonzalez? I'm in agreement. Overall, I disagree with the ALJ's recommendation to deny the permit. Um, the evidence in the record establishes that the draft permit meets all applicable requirements, including the back limits for PM and NOx. Okay, I'm going to, um, sounds like we're generally in alignment. I'm going to propose this. I'm going to um, 
ask um, Ms. Smith to circulate um, revisions to the proposed order and explanation of changes. Um, we'll take a, a recess to allow you to consider that document. And um, when we come back, if there's consensus, uh, we'll discuss any open issues and, and maybe move this towards a motion. But um, see, the time is um, 9.54. Why don't we uh, recess until 10.05? And um, if you need more time, take it, but we won't return until um, uh, 10.05 at the earliest. And Commissioner right. Gonzalez, I have emailed those documents to you. All right, with that, the time is now 9.55 and we are in recess.
colleagues, we're back um, from recess. It's 10.05. Um, Mr. Janeka, how do we do? Questions, comments? I, I don't have any questions. I would be uh, happy to make a motion. Um, I think I need to um, provide some explanation in the record, so I'll ask you in just a minute to bear with me for that. Um, and uh, but let me check in with Commissioner Gonzalez first. Commissioner Gonzalez. I don't have any additional comments. Okay. Um, I'm going to lay out in you know some level of detail um, the explanation for the changes. Um, so let me um, let me read that and appreciate you hanging in there with me. Um, let me begin with back for particulate matter. Um, I agree with the ALJ's conclusion that Valero met its burden to show that the draft permit limit of one pound per thousand pound coke burn for particulate matter is backed for the facility's heavy oil cracker, or HOC. Because back for PM was established at tier one, tier two and tier three back reviews were not conducted and were not required to be conducted. However, the proposed order omits the major source PSD definition of BACT and does not acknowledge that a BACT emission limit must be achievable and based on technologies that are commercially available, operational, obtainable, and capable of reducing or eliminating emission reductions from the facility. Accordingly, I would amend conclusion of law number 20 to include the major source BACT definition. I would amend conclusion of law number 20A starting with the back definition, excuse me, stating that the back definition requires that an emission limitation be achievable. And I would strike the last sentence in finding of fact number 54. With respect to back for Knox, I'll begin with the economic reasonableness calculation. The evidence in the record demonstrates that the tier three back analysis showed that the addition of low tox or SCR controls is economically unreasonable. I believe that the ALJs arrived at their incorrect conclusion regarding BACT for NOx in part because they misinterpreted the applicable guidance and regulations by incorporate, incorporating the lowest achievable emission standard, which is applicable in non-attainment areas, into their analysis, and by failing to follow TCEQ's BACT guidance in performing the tier three cost-effectiveness calculation for the SCR and low tox. And for reference, the back guidance that I'm referring to is document number APDG 6110. In addition, there is no allegation or evidence in the record indicating that Valero manipulated the baseline emission rate in its cost analysis. Therefore, I would amend finding effect number 59, finding effect 61, and I would strike finding effect number 65. Turning to the reclaim report, the correct standard applicable to Valero's facility in an attainment area is BACT, which requires an emission limit be achievable pursuant to 30 Texas Administrative Code section 116.160. The ALJs incorrectly relied on the reclaim report, which uses a non-standard cost accounting methodology and is not the result of a BACT analysis. Therefore, I would strike findings of fact numbers 87, 92, and 93. As for the inlet and outlet emissions concentrations, the evidence demonstrates that the correct outlet concentration to be used in a tier three back cost analysis is derived from recent back permitting decisions and the RBLC specified in the ALJ's proposed order and finding of fact number 77. In addition, the evidence shows that Valero used the correct inlet concentration and cost information in performing its tier three cost effectiveness calculations. Finally, there's no evidence in the record that the facilities in the reclaim report have demonstrated that their lower emission levels are achievable using backed method methodologies. Therefore, I would strike findings of fact numbers 88, 89, 90, 97, and 100. Further, I would strike conclusion of law number 27 and adopt findings of fact numbers 85A and 85B. Next, I'll address Valero's rebuttal evidence and the economic reasonableness standard. The ALJs erred in not considering evidence in Valero's rebuttal case supporting the executive director's tier three cost determination pursuant to 30 Texas Administrative Code section 80.17C2. 
Specifically, the ALJ's purport, proposed order fails to recognize and give weight to evidence put on by Valero as part of its rebuttal case, providing detailed cost estimates for LOTOX and SCR and regarding TCQ's economic reasonableness threshold range. Therefore, I would strike findings of fact numbers 91, 101, and 102. I would amend findings of fact, excuse me, finding of fact number 95, and I would adopt findings of fact number 85C through 85G. Um, <clears throat> summing up this portion of my analysis, and based on my review of the evidence, the applicable law, um, and the errors I have identified, I find that the ALJ's recommendation is contrary to the evidence in the record and conclude that the application meets all applicable requirements. Therefore, I would amend conclusion of law number 19 and number 31, and I would adopt conclusions of law numbers 26A and 26B. Um, I do have a few other changes. I would change finding of fact number two to clarify that the application is seeking approval for new or modified facilities to change the type of products the facility can, can manufacture. I would strike finding of fact number 111 because the draft permit meets all applicable requirements. I would renumber conclusions of law numbers 31 through 37 to ordering pr provisions one through seven and make non-substantive grammatical and formatting changes to improve the readability of the final order. Finally, in the executive director's closing argument, the executive director states that during the course of the hearing on the merits, the executive director discovered two mistakes in the draft permit. To correct the mistakes, the executive director asked the ALJs to replace the second paragraph of special condition 20 of the draft permit with the following language, quote, Total particulate matter emissions from the HL HOC shall not exceed one pound per thousand pounds of coke burned, measured as a one hour average over three performance test runs, end quote. The ED also asked the ALJs to correct the reference to the report to the Beaumont Regional Office in Special Condition 79B to refer to the Corpus Christi Regional Office. Um, now those requested changes were not discussed in the post-hearing filings. Uh, it does not appear that those changes have been made. Um, I intend to include those changes as part of my motion. And so I want to ask, um, beginning with the executive director's office, if there's any reason I should not include those corrections in my motion. Uh, we would like those changes included. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any of the other parties have a problem with that? Let's see. Thank you. All right. Seeing no objections, um, colleagues, I'm about ready to make a motion. Any additional thoughts or questions or comments? No. All right. Um, colleagues, I move that we adopt the ALJ's proposed order as revised by the document titled Recommended Revisions to the Proposed Order that I have circulated today and my remarks. I further move that we issue PSD permit numbers 38754 PSDTX34, excuse me, PSDTX324M15 and GHG PSDTX211 in accordance with the Commission's final order. And that we replace the second paragraph, paragraph special, special, 20, 20, 20, 20. Of the, of the, I'd ask the people who have joined virtually to mute their lines, please. I further move that we replace the second paragraph of special condition 20 of the draft permit with the following language, quote, total particulate matter emissions from the HOC, HOC shall not exceed one pound per thousand pounds of coke burned, measured as a one hour average over three performance test runs, end quote, and correct the reference to the report to the Beaumont Regional Office in special condition 79B to refer to the Corpus Christi Regional Office. Finally, I move that we adopt the executive director's response to comments to the extent that it does not conflict with the commission's final order. And that is my motion. Is there a second? I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Um, Ms. Smith, when you're ready, I'll ask you to please call the next item.
Item, <clears throat> item number two is the consideration of the application by Wilco Mud 45 WWTP LLC for new Texas pollutant discharge elimination system permit number WQ 00161460001. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument, but may ask questions, and those who are signed in will be noted for the record. So colleagues, hearing requester Prairie Crossing Wastewater LLC has a wastewater permit for service area that would overlap with the Wilco service area. Uh, it asserts a particularized interest in Wilco's application, so I would grant its request. The remaining requests, in my view, fail to demonstrate a personal interest in regionalization, and, and they express only general concerns about uh, water quality, nuisance odors, buffer zones, and so on. So I would deny those requests. As for the issues, I would refer regionalization, nuisance odors, buffer zones, water quality in the receiving waters, whether the anti-degradation review was proper, and whether the application is accurate and complete. I would also include an ADR referral. Commissioner Janeka. I'm in agreement. Commissioner Gonzalez. I'm also in agreement. I think we're ready for a motion. I move that we grant the hearing request of Prairie Crossing Wastewater, LLC, that we deny the remaining hearing requests, that we re refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issues. A, whether the commission should deny or alter the terms and conditions of the draft permit based on consideration of regionalization under Texas Water Code 26.0282 and 26.081. B, whether the draft permit adequately protects against nuisance odors and complies with applicable buffer zone requirements in accordance with 30 Texas Administrative Code 309.13E. C, whether the application is accurate and contains all required information. D, whether the draft permit is protective of water quality in the receiving waters in accordance with the applicable regulations, including the Texas Surface Water Quality Standards, and E, whether the draft permit complies with applicable anti-degradation requirements. For the move, we refer the matter to the Commission's Alternative Dispute Resolution Program to run concurrently with the SOA preliminary hearing scheduling efforts, and finally, that we set a hearing duration of 180 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number three is the consideration of an application by Schreiber Foods Incorporated for a major amendment of TCEQ permit number WQ00030740000. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument, but may ask questions, and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. So colleagues, in my view, Tandy Remy, who lives near the facility, has met the procedural and substantive requirements to be entitled to a contested case hearing on the issue of nuisance odors. So I would refer the request on that issue. And because it's just one party and one issue, um, I would allow 150 days for issuance of the PFD. I'm in agreement with that. Commissioner Gonzalez. Also in agreement. Can we hear a motion? And that's a duration of 100, yes. 150 days. 150 days. Good. Wanted to make sure I, I heard the right, right number. Go ahead. Okay. I, I can I move that we grant the hearing request of Tandy Remy, refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issue whether the draft permit adequately addresses nuisance odors in accordance with applicable requirements, including 30 Texas Administrative Code, Section 309.13, and set a hearing duration of 150 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item.
Item number four is the consideration of the application by Remy J Generating LLC for a major amendment without renewal to TIPTI's permit number WQ 00053330000. The parties have been notified that the commissioners will not take oral argument but may ask questions and those who have signed in will be noted for the record. So colleagues, um... As you're aware, Ms. Dunn and Mr. Kinzer have withdrawn their requests. Um, I understand that the Van Hinkerens um, concerns are, are really about flooding, which is outside our legal authority on this application. I think the Howells have raised personal interests that are within our jurisdiction relating to water quality, um, both with, re with respect to the effects on groundwater and drinking water wells, as well as the welfare of uh, wildlife and domestic animals. So. I would grant the Howell's request on that water quality issue and its various permutations um, that I've just outlined. Um, and again, since we have uh, a small number of issues, maybe even one issue um, and, a, and a single request, I would allow 150 days uh, for this PFD. And I would again, include an ADR referral. I'm supportive of that motion. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes, I also support that. I think we are ready for a motion. I move that we grant the hearing requests of David and Kathleen Howell, deny all remaining hearing requests, deny all requests for consideration, refer the application to SOA for a contested case hearing on the following issues with a concurrent referral to the Alternative Dispute Resolution Program. A, whether the draft permit is protective of water quality, including groundwater and drinking water wells, and B, whether the draft permit is protective of animal life, including fish, wildlife, and domestic animals, in accordance with the Texas Surface Water Quality Standards in 30 Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 307. Finally, set a hearing duration of 150 days from the date of the preliminary hearing until the proposal for decision is issued. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next items. That takes us to our enforcement docket, which are items five through 21. Items five and 15 were remanded to the ED and no um, additional action is necessary on those two matters. Um, but the executive director staff is here to present the others. Good morning. Good morning, chairman, commissioners, general counsel and public interest counsel. For the record, my name is Michael Parrish of the enforcement division. With me today are Melissa Cordell, also of the enforcement division and Gitanjali Yadav of the Litigation Division, representing the Executive Director. Pinning before you are items 6 through 14 and 16 through 21. The total assessed administrative penalties are $333,464, with $40,361 deferred, $231,434 applied towards supplemental environmental projects, and $61,669 to the general revenue. We respectfully request approval of these items and are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Parrish. I have none. Colleagues, any questions? No, thank you. Thank you. None. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Smith, has anybody signed in to speak on these items? No one has signed in to speak. Mr. Arthur, what says OPIC? And good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, for the record, I'm Garrett Arthur, TCEQ Public Interest Counsel. OPIC supports adoption of these enforcement orders as presented by ED staff. Thank you, colleagues. I do as well. Likewise. Thank you. You ready for a motion? Yes. Okay. I move that we adopt items 6 through 14 and 16 through 21 as recommended today by the Executive Director. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion carries. Ms. Smith, when you're ready, please call the next item. Item number 22 
is the consideration of the monthly enforcement report and the executive director staff is here to present this item as well. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, General Counsel, and Public Interest Counsel. My name is Melissa Cordell of the Enforcement Division, and with me are Craig Pritzloff of the Office of Compliance and Enforcement and Gitanjali Yadav of the Litigation Division. We are here to present the monthly enforcement report for fiscal year 2024 through February. There were 321 effective administrative orders issued, and of those, 60 contained supplemental environmental projects. These orders assessed a total of $6,371,906 with a payable amount of $2,820,871. $3,1,333 are to be paid for supplemental environmental projects. 7,109 notices of violation have been issued through either our field offices or review of self-reported data in our central office and 921 enforcement action referrals have been received. There are 2,991 pending administrative orders with 1,735 cases that are on that backlog. 171 cases are pending at the Attorney General's Office for Representation in District Court and four judgments have been issued. 1,706 cases are being tracked for compliance. The enforcement total backlog number continued to increase in February. As you are aware, the enforcement process has many steps and each incremental improvement in one step may result in an apparent increase in a later step. Our overall plan is to implement improvements in each step of the process, and we are seeing the effects of this approach, but it may take some time for the total backlog number to decrease. We are available to meet with you and discuss the specific changes and how they are leading to an overall reduction in the total backlog. We are, we are available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Cordell. Appreciate the explanation. Mm -hmm. I have no questions. Commissioner Janeka. Thank you. No questions today. I just wanted to thank uh, enforcement staff and OCE staff. I see Mr. Pritzoff up here. Thanks for your continued time. Uh, in addition to these reports, you've been helpful answering questions and, and giving explanations on this topic with me outside of, of these reports. So I just want to acknowledge that, that help. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gonzalez. I don't have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Has anybody signed in to speak on this item? No one has signed in on this one. Mr. Arthur, back to you again. OPIC has no comment except to say that we appreciate the report. Thank you, um, colleagues. I also appreciate the report and the explanation. No action is necessary on this item. So, Ms. Smith, I'll ask you to please call the next items. Hey, the commission will be taking up items 23 through 28 together. They are the consideration of the adoption of amendments to 30 Texas Administrative Code chapters 115 and 117, the Dallas-Fort Worth severe attainment demonstration SIP revision for the 2008 eight-hour ozone max, the Dallas-Fort Worth and Houston-Galveston-Brazoria severe areas reasonable further progress SIP revisions for the 2008 eight-hour ozone max, the Houston Galveston Brazoria severe attainment demonstration SIP for the 2008 eight hour ozone max, and the Bear County 2015 eight hour ozone standard moderate non attainment area reasonably available control technology SIP revision. And the executive director um, staff is here to present these items. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners, general counsel, and public interest counsel. On behalf of the executive director, I am Allison Stokes with the Air Quality Division. With me today is Bob Gifford with the Air Quality Division. Terry Salem and John Minter with the Environmental Law Division are available online as well as additional technical staff. For your consideration today are items 23 and 24, revisions to 30 Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 115, Control of Air Pollution from Volatile Organic Compounds, and Chapter 117, Control of Air Pollution from Nitrogen Compounds. Also for your consideration today are items 25 through 28, revisions to the State Implementation Plan or SIP. Items 25 through 27 address attainment demonstration and reasonable further progress requirements for both the Dallas-Fort Worth and Houston-Galveston-Brazoria severe non-attainment areas for the 2008 eight-hour ozone national ambient air quality standard or NAC. 
products. Item 28 addresses reasonably available control technology requirements for the Bayer County moderate non-attainment area for the 2015 eight hour ozone max. Staff respectfully re recommends adoption of the rule and supervisions the air quality of Bear County and the Dallas-Fort Worth and Houston-Galveston Brazoria areas, and ultimately benefit the public who reside in or visit those areas. Further, OPIC recognizes the need for the efficient and expedient adoption of these rules and SIP revisions. We would also like to express our appreciation for the public inclusion efforts in these projects. We note that plain language summaries of these matters were provided in both English and Spanish, and the public hearings that were held included Spanish language interpreters as necessary. In short, after review, OPIC supports adoptions of these rulemakings and SIP revisions. Thank you, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wayne. I, I have none. Um, I'll, I'll just say, uh, well said. I'll simply adopt your analysis. I think that was outstanding. The one thing that I would add, a concern that I have about this package is it's another example of programs evolving or growing and demanding um, demanding more of our staff, particularly in the Office of Compliance and Enforcement, and I, um, and I worry about the burden on our, uh, on our staff. A little bit tangential, maybe outside the item before us, but, um, but it is uh, a consequence of this rulemaking. So colleagues with that, um, I'm certainly ready to, to move forward. I'm as well. Commissioner Gonzalez. Hey. Good. I would move, we adopt the amendments to 30, Texas Administrative Code chapters 115 and 117, the Houston Galveston Brazoria 2008, eight hour ozone standard severe non-attainment area attainment demonstration state implementation plan revision, the Dallas Fort Worth 2008, eight hour ozone standard severe non-attainment area attainment demonstration state implementation plan revision, the Dallas-Fort Worth and Houston-Galveston Brazoria 2008 eight-hour ozone standard severe non-attainment area reasonable further progress state implementation plan revision. And finally, the Bayer County 2015 eight-hour ozone standard moderate non-attainment area reasonably available control technology state, implement state implementation plan revision as recommended by the executive director. Second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Ms. Smith, please call the next items. Items 29 through 32 are for closed session and the commission will not meet in closed session today. Thank you, Ms. Smith. We are adjourned at 1034 a.m.